Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Mystic. Tonight, we have a wonderful match coming forward here. Tonight, we're going to have Arrogant Nephilim facing off against Wholesome Halfwits. Both the teams are filling into the lobby now, so let's take a quick look at everything going on. Let's catch up on how things are going here. We've got Wholesome Halfwits sitting pretty down there in seventh place, looking to score a win tonight. Try to climb those ranks with the upcoming playoffs just around the corner. On the other end, we've got Arrogant Nephilim sitting fourth place. So they're going to continue their climb there and keep on trucking. The teams are filling in here. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the maps while we're waiting. We've got Eric Wholesome Halfwits winning the coin toss tonight. They chose first map pick, so they have decided to go with Tomb of the Spider Queen. Our first map band tonight was Sky Temple, with the second one being followed by Cursed Hollow. As you can see, the respective colors match up there for the bands. So, Tomb of the Spider Queen, a map that focuses a lot on the macro, on the lane clear, getting that objective, and just pushing in hard. Well, so interesting drafts here. Diablo's prioritized here for the shrine coverage. Looking forward to see what these teams have in store and what they plan to run here. It's always exciting to see the different strategies you have come out here. Some teams like to just take the isolate, blow it up, and just keep that one-man advantage going. Some just like to focus on the wave clear. So we'll see what's going on here, but we will be back here shortly. We're still waiting on one of the teams, and we'll get another preview going here in just a minute. All right, welcome back. We're waiting on two more members. <sighs> waiting on two more members here from Wholesome Halfwits. We can start here in just a second. First map is Tomb of the Spider Queen. Be jumping into this very shortly here. Just waiting on one last person. So we're gonna have once again Cursed Hollow band out, along with Sky Temple on the respective bands there. Two of the Spider Queen was wholesome half wits pick. We'll see what the teams try to focus with here. Going with either the wave clear or if they want to just focus on team fight and just holding those gems and keeping control of either top or bottom lane and pushing it on in. First pick will be head going to Arrogant Nephilim. And as soon as we have this last team member in here, we will be getting started rather shortly. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're all doing well. This is Division B West, and once again, the standings show right there on the right. That way. Mirror image. 
with Ergot Nephilim sitting in fourth. We have some setup issues here. One second. All right, we're just getting set up here. We've got a bit of an issue with my on my end here with Susair filling the rosters out on the wrong side, so I've got everybody mixed up. Kill it in. Sick tie. As we wait on this last team member in here to show up. I'm just going to keep filling this out here. Some interesting names on these teams. Okay. Do, 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 do. Waiting on one more person here. I don't have much to fill in with at the moment because I'm fixing everything else. But we should be good to go any moment now. Okay, just double checking my stuff after that. Alright, so waiting on the last member of. We're getting Nephilim. Okay, they are waiting on their fifth on the side of Arrogant. So as we wait on them, let's take another. Just some looks at some different things. Oh, they're killing me here. They're killing me here. Okay, one more time. It's a guy. Trabe, Noel, the kill it in. Awesome, awesome. CJ, Crooked, Money, Neutrons, and Freckle Pants. I think we're finally in order here. Awesome. How's everyone doing tonight? We're just waiting on the last one to show up. Just going back and forth. There's another look at the maps as we kind of wait. I've not seen either of these teams in action myself, and unfortunately I had a prior engagement to this, so I did not get a chance to really dig into these teams beforehand, but I'm curious to see where they go. In fact, I'm going to see if I can pull their information up here on the nexusgamingseries.org website. Let's take a look at B West. We have Wholesome Halfwits. Sitting at four wins and four losses. Their top five out heroes seem to be Anna, Imperius, Kael'thas, Draenor, and Genji. So I'm curious to see where we go. They've got a nice variety of heroes played. Looks like they've kind of played a little bit of everybody on both sides. They're looking at the other side of Arrogant Nephilim. So you get six wins, six losses, favoring ranged assassins as well with the bruisers, Anubarak on their list as well. They've also played a healthy variety of heroes. They've played about the same amount here. They favor Tomb of the Spider Queen, which is the map we are going to, actually. 
And they've vanned out Curse Hollow every time. No change there tonight on their end. As we continue to hang out here, waiting on this last team member, we're sitting at the five minute mark. Why don't we wait on some music? Alright, checking back in with you guys. How's everybody doing tonight? We are still waiting on the final member for Team Arrogant Nephilim. He is patching at the moment, so... Waiting on that. Hopefully that goes pretty quick. They're down to about 7 minutes here. Let's review the maps one more time here. We've got... Game number 1 is going to be on Tomb of the Spider Queen, with the map bands being Cursed Hollow on the side of Arrogant Nephilim, and Sky Temple on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. As soon as this fifth member gets in here, we will be getting the ready checks and jumping right into this match. So two with the Spider Queen, again, one of those maps where the, the, the strategies here tend to vary. The, the camps have some priority, bottom lane camp in particular. The focus tends to be on the top lane with the bus. There's Kime. We have our fifth person in. We will be getting started here any minute. Let me get the ready checks. Hey, Ragnarok, thanks for the raid there, bud. We're getting started here any moment now. We got a ready on one side, ready on the other. Let's kick this thing off. Three, two, one. We're finally getting this match going. Tomb of the Spider Queen. 
Here we go, Tomb of the Spider Queen 4, game number one. And it's going to be Arrogant Nephilim with the starting pick and ban here. This was Wholesome Halfwit's pick. Start out with the Anna ban. Her, that should be noted. That's something I forgot to mention before. And Anna's Eye of Horrors is available for play now. We also have Chromie and Lucio reworks currently on the ban list. So we will see how the teams build around that. Anna getting banned now. She's still a very strong healer right now. Definitely at the top of the list. Even Nano Boost is so good with a good mage. And you've got Eye of Horus now piercing everybody that it hits. And now with the bugs settled out, I'm curious to see if any teams start running it. And we got Imperius and Kael'thas banned the next two. So Imperius, another strong solo laner here. Two of the Spider Queen, definitely one where you want that strong solo laner on the bottom lane while the other four do the rotations. Diablo getting banned out as well. They prioritize Tink always. So that leaves a Nubarak open for pick here in the first round of this draft. Who are we going to have coming out on the side of Arrogant Nephilim? Any minute. And it is going to be the Anubarak. So the one tank, he slips through. Diablo gets banned out when Anubarak is immediately picked up. You're on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Definitely, probably by far, the strongest tank in the meta right now. Lots of CC. Really pairs well with that Imperius as well, although he's been banned out for this time. And we've got Taranda and Johanna coming out on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. I like this. Johanna's great on this map. Great wave clear. Great great lane pressure coming out of her and it just allows them to kind of keep those rotations between lanes going very strong. Toronto always a strong healer especially build in, build in and around her. As long as she's not getting driven out and can't get those auto attacks where she's not getting those auto attacks and so she can keep up a constant stream of healing she'll be in good shape. This is followed up by Jaina and Maiev on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Very dangerous combo right there. I like that combo setup. Look at it, Cage into either Ring of Frost or Water Elemental. But the, the Cage with the Blizzard on top of it just is so much damage. So coming out from third picks here coming up, we've got Wholesome Halfwits mulling it over. And they're going to go with the Stukov ban here, choking out another healer. Healers are still quite numerous, though. We've got plenty up on the side of Arrogant Nephilim here. Once again, Ragnarok, thanks for the raid, thanks for the follow. Here we go. Jimmy is banned on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. It's going to take me a few minutes, a couple of minutes to get going on this casting here. I've been running with co-casters lately, so forgetting that I don't have somebody to bounce ideas off of here. But as we sit here, waiting on Wholesome Halfwits, I'm curious to see how they follow this up here. They're going with Sylvanas. Uh, kind of a sleeper hero right now. That dagger build on Sylvanas is super powerful in a in a team fight oriented map, stacking up very quickly and just raking the damage through the teams. Followed up by a blaze, so that's probably more than likely gonna be their solo later. I don't see who they would out of those four do it. We've got Deckard Kane. I have not seen Deckard all season on my end. This should be interesting. He, I, the lockdown is great. He pairs well with Maya, pairs well with Jaina, and of course a new break. Just so much control coming out on the side of Arrogant Nephilim right now. Whereas, Wholesome Halfwits, they've got the stuns, they've got some pools, they've got... But nothing really comboing into each other here, so I'm curious to see how they make it work. They could go Blaze into th stun and Tehran to stun. They need something to follow that up and clean it up with, though. And they've got a Maltheo as a solo laner coming out for Arrogant Nephilim here. I am just hanging out in the coin flip lobby. Why not? Thank you, Hector. Now we've got Gold Dan here to clean to round this out. All right, I like this. This will help. Gold Dan can stay safe. His fear will help keep his team a little bit safer. Actually, if he can uh, get that horrify out, if they start trying to do these stun locks here, uh, can also isolate Deckard or Malthus or Maya, who all of which are very squishy. And Deckard really can't keep up with bursts if somebody gets isolated. 
So one good Horrify can swing a team fight, but Jaina with the ring, Maev with the cage, Deckard with the roots, Malthale with the finishing touch, and Anubrek with Cocoon. I've kind of got to lean towards Arrogant Nephilim going into game number one here. What are your thoughts, chat? Let me know who you think is going to take game number one as we load in the Tomb of the Spider Queen. So it looks like I'm going to expect both these teams to be running a solo man in the bottom with a four man rotation top and bottom with Blaze and Malthale playing, hanging out, doing things in that bottom lane. We'll keep an eye on them. Sylvanas, Johanna, going to be able to keep up in wave clear against Jaina, Jaina Maev. So I think these both these teams have really good wave clear, which is a good priority on this map. It's really going to come down to who starts off strong. And who gets these early starches? Here we go. We've got Dekiladin on the Maiev. We've got Null Pointer on the Kane. We've got Tribe on the Jaina. Segetai on the Nubrek. And Kime on the Mouth Ale for Arrogant Nephilim. On the side of Wholesome Halfwits, we've got Neutrons on Goldan. Crooked Smile on Savannah. Freckle Pants on the Toronto. Dr. Jelly on the Johanna. And rounding it out is G Money Drums on the Blaze. So here, get it, hype chat. That is Wholesome Halfwits. Here we go. Game number one starting just in a minute. All teams immediately going towards the middle, so plenty of stacks here. Let's look at the level 1 talents. Very, very standard here. Unfurling shadows that Dagger Quest I was talking about. Echoed Corruption. New habits. Sprays all over the place. These teams padding their stats. And here we go. Anubrek immediately pulled in. Segatai taking a lot of damage right off the bat. Followed in by the Blaze Stun, but Jelly is getting pulled away by Maiev. Gonna pop that unstoppable and walk away so nobody really gets anything done there. A couple of stacks on two people as Wholesome Halfway stole the, both the globes there, denying Jaina both of hers. New Habits picked up. Echo Corruption's got two stacks. Five stacks on Sylvanas, and here we go. See Wholesome Halfway setting up in the bush. J Johanna doing a great job just being vision for her team as they're gonna rotate and clear these waves out really quick. Meanwhile, on the bottom, we got Mouthville versus Blaze, as we talked about. Both of them with solid wave clear, both of them solid solo laners. We'll keep an eye on that matchup. That should be an interesting matchup. Both with great self sustain as well. Here we go. Anubrak getting low again. He's going to have to burrow out. Getting pulled. Here's the follow up damage. There's the stun, and the first blood goes to Wholesome Halfwits. Nice stun follow up there on the Toronto, but Mayav coming in to get the pull as well. Not going to be enough. As everybody from the side of Arrogant Nephilim has decided, let's back away from this. Maltho winning the bottom lane at the moment. With the changes made to Blaze, Blaze tends to be more focused on just shooting fire. We miss a Mayev pickoff as I was watching the solo lane. I apologize, chat. So Wholesome Halfway's getting two big picks early on. They don't even have Garage. So nice focus on their on their stuns and the follow-ups from the Gul'dan. Very, very well done starting out here from Wholesome Halfwits. Both teams just kind of cleaning up. Both teams sitting at about 20 gems. Mouthheel's going to sneak down here to this bottom camp. And Uber getting isolated again. He's going to get away this time. Here we go. And you see Wholesome Halfway is rotating down as well. They're looking for the Mouthheel gank. Here they come. They're just ahead of the other of Arrogant Nephilim. Blaze is holding his own on the point. Giants are pretty much dead. Blaze is going to sit there. No, Newberg burrows in. G Money Drums is low on health, but so is Kimei Segatai. Everybody is going down. Dropping low. Neutrons is super low. Freckle Pants doing everything she he can to keep him up. Down goes Toronto. Down goes Maiev. Down goes Goldan. And Arrogant Nephilim winning this, but they eventually lose the point. But down goes Blaze. So Arrogant Nephilim. Arrogant Nephilim. Gets the point, but at what cost? They lost three people there. Getting blood of their own, though. So both teams rotating back up to that top turn in point. 
Neither team really. Oh, I'm sorry. Nephilim snuck a turn in, and we're at 36 gems on the side of Nephilim. 26 on the side of Halfwits. Both teams are kind of back to the rotations. Just doing what they can here. Getting that XP lead. We're at level 6. There's your level 7 talents for you. Johanna going with the Conviction. I like it. Toronto with the Stun Quest. Blade Dance from the Maiev. Means Maiev's going to be planning to be in deep all the time. Here we go. Final turn ends coming in. And the first Web Weavers are going to go to Arrogant Nephilim. Jaina sitting at 9. Echo Corruption at 16. There's an isolated stun on, on Jaina. She's going to get blown up by the dagger damage. In comes Maiev. Had changes her mind. A new break. Already headed towards middle. Everybody rotating towards middle. Blaze is in the bottom. Mouthale still hanging out in bottom. So Focus is going to be on the middle. Middle here for Arrogant Nephilim. That that spider is just getting destroyed. So much damage on the side of wholesome halfwits here. Now that top spider's got the gate down. Still already at half health. And waves pushed in, but here comes wholesome halfwits. So not much getting done with this first spider turn in here. No walls. No no towers down. Oh, that's step down here in the bottom. Maltho getting a good push in, but G-Money holding it down. Only losing half of his wall and f a tower. Maltho's going to steal this other tower, it looks like. So at least the bottom lane got some damage done there. But for the most part, not much getting done on this first set of turn-ins. Wholesome Halfwits now dropping theirs, and so we're going to turn on and have another spider phase coming up. His level 7 talents are there on the screen for you guys. We've got both gems out for Deckard Kane. So Vonis is here. This is going to be a strong push top by Crooked Smile, while the rest of Wholesome Halfwits looks like they're going to try to keep the fight middle. But uh, Sylvanas is out deep. Going to have to wave away. In come the spiders. Blaze is going to have to go clean up that bottom lane, help that spider push a little bit. Here we go, four on four in the top. They've got the Sylvanas black arrows to really drive the spider in deep if they can get the push in. Kimei's already on it, just dishing out the damage. So is Jaina. Such good spider wave clear on both sides here. Jelly's doing his best to isolate. Kimei eating a ton of corruption damage. So does Trabe. And here we go. They're getting a little bit more done here with this top lane. Well is down. Here comes here comes the fight. Johanna getting a big pull there. Jaina just... Or Malthiel eating a ton of damage. But damage is being returned on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. So kind of a back and forth fight. Nobody really falling there. Blaze gets that bottom lane pushed in. So big spider push in the bottom lane. Besides that, not much happening in the middle. But a good good push there on the top. Getting all the forts and most of the well and the keep. And getting towers down in bottom. So getting a little more value out of their spiders here. Blaze with a big charge in. And down, that's going to be in the mouth ale. And they're going to be able to take this fort. So overall, first spider wave four. Wholesome halfway. Starting out strong. Very strong here. And they're just coordinating their stuns very well. Level 10's online. We've got Blessed Shield. We've got Bunker. We've got Horrify, Shadow Stalker, and Wailing Arrow for our wholesome halfwits. Blaze rotating up to the top. I'm going to keep pushing that in. Sylvanas here in the bottom. Stunning out that tower. His ults have come online for Arrogant Nephilim. We've got Ring of Frost. We've got Warden's Cage. We've got Stay a While and Listen, Cocoon, and Last Rites. Stay a While being thrown out and hitting only the Joe. But that's good. Might be enough, but no. The damage has turned around on them instead. Down goes Maiev. Cocoon thrown on the Goldan, trying to buy his team a little bit of time as Sig has to burrow away. And Wholesome Halfwits just keeping Arrogant Nephilim on their toes here as Kimei takes his Bruiser Camp. Meanwhile, the team was dying in the process. Top lane working on that fort. Everybody here in the middle for Wholesome Halfwits. They're going to take this fort as well. They're going to have a two fort advantage going on. 53 of their 55 gems. Arrogant Nephilim does have enough for their own turn in, but they're not going to have much of a chance to push it in and get there at the moment. Wholesome Halfwits really has control of this map right now. No camps taken yet on their side. And Sylvanas going with the possession there. <laughs> Getting some extra minions, but that also means a little bit extra XP when it's cleared. Goldan finally starting this bruiser camp down here on the bottom. Maiev going down for the siege. Maiev. Mouthiel going for the siege camp here. 
And Arrogant Nephilim is going to sneak in this turn, and they're going to have enough. It's scouted out. Good Owl Interrupt. It may not be enough. Here comes the last 17 gems. Oh, it's a great Interrupt by Sylvanas. Joe coming in now. They're going to be able to drive them away. They only need to turn in five of their six gems. Malthiel turning it in the bottom. He's got eight. It's not going to be enough, though. Both teams just sitting on one turn in here. You got Vruz just pushing down the middle four. Holds some half wits. There goes Joe. Sylvanas turning in her gems. This is going to be another Spider Queen on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. Doing a very good job keeping control of this map. This Blaze cleans up the Giants in the bottom. The other four are here pushing middle. They should take this top fort now. They should have a good push going on here. Blaze has finished his quest. Jaina one globe away on her end. Goldan just six hits away. And Sylvanas only sitting at 50 stacks here at nine minutes. That's a that's a pretty good number. And team fights have kind of been spread out a lot. Not getting much chance to stack. There's a big silence coming out from the Wailing Arrow. Blaze follows in immediately. Tron to Sun gets the lands the kill on Deckard Kane, and they have no healers as Ring of Frost goes out trying to buy their team some time. Bunker goes down as well. And so a desperation Ring of Frost just trying to buy their team some time. Pays off. Also costs the Bunker. But that's going to be a top fort gone on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. So here we go. Nice, healthy spider here. Both spiders in the bottom and mid lane looking healthy as well as they push on towards the keep. Big damage coming out from the Jaina to start it out. Gets a big pull. Echo Corruption is done. Kill it in, taking a lot of damage there. Key made very low as well. The damage is just all over the place. Deckard's potions aren't coming out fast enough to keep up. And there goes a big stun from Blaze. As Savannah fishes off the Maev. Malthail. Big Horrify. Down goes the new break. Down goes Godan. Down goes Maev. Now Maev. Big stay a while though, but there's no, really no damage follow up as Jane has blown all her cooldowns already. Alts are down, there goes Deckard Kane. Only last strides up, but Mouth Ale and all of them are all dead. We've got nothing left here. This is a big, big push here. And Wholesome Halfwits gonna go ahead and take this other keep. Could they get all three keeps with this wave? With this turn in? That'd be huge. Two of them, they're gonna get all three. What a what excellent play on the spiders there. They're sitting at 15 to 13 in levels, 13 to 4 in the kills, and they have all buildings down on the side of Arrogant Nephilim at this point. This is going to be a hard-fought battle coming back. They do have a turn in on their side. They got the gems. They've just got to get there and not and not lose them. What does Wholesome Halfwits have plans? Are they going to bait the boss? Or are they just going to take it? They've almost got 16. Looks like that's what they're doing. Waiting till 16. Jelly going to scout out the rest of the teams. And Arrogant Nephilim's on to it. Here they are, sitting up in the bushes. Here we go, 16's online. Goldan chunking down the Nubarak already. That spell shield not doing much. Here's a big fight here. Big Ring of Frost coming out, though. Immediately, though, down two Arrogant Nephilim members. Malthiel's super low as well. Bunker is down. Goldan's just going to throw some fire from in there. Kime is super low. Eventually goes down. Second time may not get away as well. Sylvanas is chasing. And Wholesome Halfwits have this game in sights. They are mounting up. They are charging in. Game one at 12 minutes. Wholesome Halfwits making the push in. Here we go. Damage is going on the core. Six seconds left for Decker. Six, five seconds for Jaina. Will it be enough? Ring is down. They have Mouth Maev's ult as well. Here she goes. Maev going in. Pulling everybody in, drops the cage. Here comes the stay a while. Here comes the blizzard. It's not going to be enough. Down goes Maya. Freckle Pants, super low, but staying alive. Great healing from Taronda on himself. Decker down, Blaze down 40%. Big pushes in, two catapults. This should be GG. This could be very well spelled the end. At 12 minutes 40 seconds, we have game one going to the side of Wholesome Halfwits. Ladies and gentlemen, Great game one, great play on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. That was fabulously well done. I can speak in words. Very well done here. Let's take a look at the quick stats. 19 to 6 on the side of the kills. Malthiel with 80,000 siege damage, Goldan with 95. Sylvanas topping the damage on the side of the Halfwits. Arrogant Nephilim's top damage. Jaina only at 27, not able to really get much done. The double frontline really paying off there for Wholesome Halfwits. And so a really strong start on their side. Let's see where we're gonna what we're gonna have going on here in game number two. Let me check in with the captains. We will be back shortly.
All right, welcome back. We've got the teams loading up here. Let's take a quick look at the results from game number one. Game number one was on Tomb of the Spider Queen, picked by Wholesome Halfwits. They take the win in an incredible less than 13 minute game. Very well played, very good wave clear and macro on their side. Just keeping the pressure up, keeping Arrogant, ha Arrogant Nephilim on their toes the entire game. The double front line paying off in spades, as they would say. Teams loading in now. Game number two is going to be picked by Arrogant Nephilim. We are going to Dragonshire. So another map that focuses a lot of priority on a strong solo lane with good wave clear as you rotate between the top and bottom lanes. Of course, wanting to hold those shrines. Uh, domination, once again, this map is going to be focused on that bottom lane. There's two siege camps that push along with a bruiser camp. <coughs> and top lane, of course, has that bridge choke that nobody likes to fight on. So we're waiting on one more on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. We will be back shortly. Stick around. Game 2 should be very, very exciting. They loaded up a lot faster this time than I expected. So we've got both teams here getting ready, getting the readies in just now. Game number two on Dragon Shire picked on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Once again, there's your map results. Both teams are ready. Question mark. I get from one of them. I'm assuming that means they're ready. So here we go. Wholesome half it's right now halfway there on the upset for tonight. And they are ready to roll. Double check everything. Boom, here we go. Let's jump right into draft here. Going on to Dragonshire. As I said a minute ago, the map that purchased is that solo lane being held down very strong. This is a big map for, for heroes like Rexar, Imperius, Malthale. Anybody who can kind of zone out that top. Falstead is good. Dahaka's big here because he can burrow down and help with that bottom lane. Uh, bottom bottom two lanes are going to be a, most likely a four-man rotation with focus on that bottom lane, just getting the soak between both maps. <laughs> I realized what I did game one. I hit. I told the pop-ups to pop up, but I never changed anybody's hero. Oh, well, we have kill thoughts coming from on the van on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. Anna again on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. I will try to make things work correctly this time. It's been a couple weeks. So here we go. Looking to see what gets banned here for the second ban. I expect a strong solo laner being banned by both these teams here. Macy and Mouthdale ban. He did pretty... He did some work. Rexar getting banned out. There we go. There's the Rexar ban. Alright, will there be another Diablo ban here? Will they ban the Nubrak this time? We'll see what gets through. Are both those tanks going to make it through? Curious to see where Arrogant's going to take it. Take it to the Diablo. So Nubrak up on the board again. Let's see where he ends up. Let's see if Dr. Jelly sticks to that Johanna. Which was actually right on my pop-up last game because it didn't change. So, pro casting here, ladies and gentlemen. Stick around. <laughs> Those of you joining us, thanks for hopping in. Thanks for hanging out. We have a fun match ahead. And we've got Taronda coming out. First pick from Freckle Pants again. Seems to be favoring that, that healer tonight. And why not? The stuns were perfect last game. Hit almost every single one of them. Always timed well with the charge from the blaze. So, no surprise on that there. Let's see what goes on here. Stukov coming out this time on the side of Arrogant Nephilim and Garage. Oh, I like this. This is a good map for both of these heroes here. 
So we'll see how they utilize that. We've got going to have no pointer on the Stukov. It looks like Sega Ties will be running Garrosh this game. How does Wholesome Halfwits want to counter this? Do they run a Medivh? I don't know if either of them run Medivh. Jaina, a new break is a good answer there. Just cocoon that Garrosh and dive their team. Always an answer. So third band's coming up here. See what we get. We've got three picks left on the side of our Nephilim, two on the side of Wolfram Halfwit, seven seconds left on the third band phase. I'm curious what they're going to focus. They need something to help. There it is. That's not a surprising one. Sylvanas was played very well last game. The dagger value getting in there later in the game has those stacks wrecked up. Just a ton of AoE damage. And it did a number on Arrogant Nephilim. Although Sukov can kind of counter that damage a little bit himself. Wholesome Halfwits here debating their next band pick. Debating their strategy here against this Garage. Stukov is still able to do that rooting combo. He's got, not till, little, not till later in the game, but he still has that nice root combo with his silence and his pestial detonation. It's another Jimmy ban here, so they're keeping that poke away. Let's see what kind of burst that Arrogant Nephilim's going to follow this up with. They need something to really blow these isolated heroes up. There's still some good mages on the board. There's still Orphea. There's Malthael. There's Cassia. Malthael likely going to be the solo lane. Cassia's a good little answer. Good blinds. Uh, that's really going to give Taronda some trouble there. If she can't shoot people. She can't heal. And Trave on the Cassia. My pop-ups are going to be right this game. I guarantee it. <coughs> Feel free to give your input. Chat, don't be strangers. Let me know what you think. Alarak and Zeratul. Oh my goodness. The control on the side of Wholesome Halfwits knows no end. G Money going to be on the Zeratul. Crooked Smile going to be on the Alarak unless somebody swaps. So, what's the final answer here for Arrogant Nephilim? Alaric's likely going to be solo landing against Malthiel. That should be a fun little matchup there. It's going to be Ragnaros. I like this pick. And that's more than likely going to be your answer to Alaric's solo landing. I think. I don't know. Ragnaros may be in the format. Uh, he does provide great clever, cover. He does also allow you to stall those Dragon Knights out quite a bit. So here we go. Getting ready to load into this map. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to Dragon Shire for game number two. Wholesome Halfways of 1 nothing. Let's hear it for our teams. Get your votes in chat. Who do you think is going to win game number two? Will Wholesome Halfways take the 2 0 sweep and the upset? Or Arrogant Nephilim drag this back in to game number three? As we wait our load up here. A lot of control again on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. Garrosh, Stukov, Cassia, Ragnaros can definitely burn some heroes down. So can Malthiel. I, I think, I think Malthiel's going to be their solo laner. I really do. But here we go, loading on in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Arrogant Nephilim as we've got Trabe on the Cassia, no pointer on the Stukov, to kill it in on Ragnaros, Segatai on Garrosh, and Kime on the Malthiel. Over on Wholesome Halfwits, we've got Dr. Jelly on Anubarek, Crooked Smile playing the Alarek, G Money playing the Zeratul, Neutrons on the Jaina, and Tarana back on the. F back in the hands of Freckle Pants. Let's hear it for our teams. Let me know who you think is going to win in chat. Let's see how this goes. Dragonshire. One of those maps where the first objective can take a long time to kick off. We'll see. Big macro focus on this map. Let's see how these teams handle this situation here. Jelly coming in through the bushes. Everybody else meeting in the middle. Do we get into the spray contest? Not this time. No sprays to be shared. Oh, there they go. We got the classic Heroes logo spray right there in the middle. G-Money taking some good early damage here from the meatball. It looks like 
Yeah, we got Meatball Build on Gragnaros. We've got Thunderstroke on Cassia. Silence. Low Blow coming from Stukov. Garrosh going with the Stun Quest. Jaina going with the Globes. And Alaric going Sustaining Power. We've got Alaric and Zeratul in the top lane right now. Both super low. So Kima getting some work done pretty quick there. There's a throw away on the new break. May not have been what Sigatai was trying to do there, but it worked out. You think to rule the Dragon Tower? This first shrine coming up here in 25 seconds. This map always has an early focus here on the objectives. We see both teams dipping away. I can definitely going to start on their siege camps. Scouting out the mouth hills up top being safe. I'm going to start on their siege camps as well. So both teams are going to be getting these camps out roughly roughly the same time, and roughly is being generous. And Arrogant Nephilim's going to invade. There's only two members here for a wholesome half, which three now as Freckled comes in, and Arrogant Nephilim going to take this away, but no Newberg burrowing back in here. Trying to stay in there. He's going to risk his life for this camp. I don't think it was worth it. Segatai is super low, though. Neutrons is as well. There's the meatball getting another kill. So an immediate difference from game number one here, as we have... Oh, Malthiel falling in the top lane as well. But first blood going to the side of Ergot Nephilim. Alaric's going to hold that top lane down. Freckle Pants and G-Money just going to clean this up pretty nicely. But a very, very early aggressive call on the side of Ergot Nephilim, and it pays off this time. Denying both the XP and the camp, and getting blood along with it, getting him almost a full level lead here. And Grush is tossing a Nubarak around like the bug that he is. Good job by killing in to rotate up, keep the soak up, and just pressure Alarak in that top lane. As we have a fight going on here in the bottom, Giants are cleaned up. It's 3v3 in the bottom lane with Zeratul and Ragnar Ragnaros hanging out in the middle. Alarak and Malthiel fighting up in the top. Grush not quite landing his stuns there. Level 4 is on the screen there for you. Alarak has control of that top lane again. Zeratul is rotated up. Let's see. There's the gank on the Malthiel. That's going to speed spell the end of Kime. Another death there on the mouth ale. Very nice rotation from the Zero Tool, but bottom lane, going to see Wholesome Halfwits having to back out here, grab their well, just kind of wait it out. Zero Tool is coming down here any second, and we're going to have a 4 on 4 going on here. Another throwaway. Poor Newbreak not able to stay on the point, he just keeps getting tossed away. Ragnaros back in the middle. So I get Nephilim still holding that one nearly. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Wholesome Halfwits has the lead now after that gank on the XP. Orange is the or red is the color of the shrines right now. Malthio is going to take that top one there. Crooked Smile just happy to clean that up, draw this fight out for his team, knowing he has that top lane under control, especially with the Zeratul roaming. And they've sent Garrosh to the middle. He's low on mana. G Money's there as well, missing the slam. There's a dive on the Ragnaros, and with no tank there, down he goes. Toronto following up the, the dive with a stun, perfectly timed. And not having Garrosh there is going to end up being a pretty hefty mistake on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Ragnaros, Ragnaros at 50 stacks there. No point, they're going to walk down here and just step on the shrine. It, it's going to be very close. He does get it. Very nicely done. So blue back in control in the bottom. Arrogant Nephilim. Kime in trouble again. Here comes the Zeratul. Not gonna, oh! What a pull by Crooked Smile. Beautiful fit kill there. Very well done on the Alarak. Very nicely done. And it's back to red here. Zeratul's already waiting in the middle. There's four in the bottom. Four Arrogant Nephilim. And First Dragon is going to go to the side of Wholesome Halfwits. They're just playing on their game right now. Level 7's online for both teams. We've got... One good spread and growing infestation from the Stukov. Dragon being pushed down the middle, though. May just be trying to pull them away before rotating down. Maybe trying to get that well. Both the tires getting pummeled. It is a very early dragon. Not much is going to get done with it either way. As the rest of the team continues to push bottom lane, keeps the team divided. Alaric and Malthiel still dueling in the middle. Alaric having to dash away, but Malthiel's got the dive to keep up with him. That healing lightning not doing... Doing just enough, really, there for Crooked Smile. Big charge from the Dragon. He's as it's in the bottom lane now. Left the well up in the middle. They're just pushing here. Mouse going crazy, but we got it under control here. 
And so walls down on top or middle and bottom here for Holstman Halfwits. Good use of a very early dragon there. And a spray to to top it off as Tehran rides away on her soap and Zeratul just walks on out. So very good use of that early dragon. Gonna allow the lanes to be a little more threatening. As both teams take their camp, so I don't think Arrogant Nephilim is going to be able to sneak in and raid this one away here. Matho opting for bruisers. He's almost done with that as Alaric continues to soak level 10s on line 4, wholesome halfwits. we got Jaina and Nubrag doing the same on their end. And a fight in the bottom lane as Vragdos has finished the meatball. Spicy meatballs on line here for Arrogant Nephilim. The ults on the side of Wholesome Halfwits, though, is going to be Cocoon, Ring of Frost, Void Prison. That's not a surprising there. Shadowstalk and Deadly Charge coming from the Alarak. Most up for that Counter-Strike here. I'm curious to see how he's going to utilize this. He's got a lot of cleanup to do in that top lane at the moment, though. That's the one thing Alarak, while he's a solid little solo laner, he does struggle a bit in the wave clear department. Good throw on, on the Anubrak. Gonna get stunned out. Gonna get silenced. He's gonna be able to walk away thanks to Toronto with an excellent stun. And then the Shadowstalk just to buy him a little bit more health and time. Very nicely played. It did cost an ult. Looks like Lightning Orb and Taunter down as well, though. Zero tool rotating down as well. Blizzard is... Or Ring of Frost is still up. Void Prism is up. There's your Lava Wave as we've got Flailing, flailing Swipe Lava Wave. Bouncy Lightning Ball, Last Strikes, and Taunt on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. Ragnaros getting picked off in the back, but gotta be able to survive there. G-Money has to back away as the rest of Arrogant Nephilim rotated in on him. Garage on the point, gets Cocoon. There's the Deadly Charge from Alaric diving straight into that back line. Very nicely done. Down goes the Cassia. Stukov's gonna be able to just barely walk away. Garage throwing them off the point. But he's, he's, he's gonna risk his life for this point. It's not gonna be enough. Down goes Segatai as well. And Wholesome Halfwits are rolling as uh, Void Prism stops Anubrak from diving in. <laughs> and you see the retreat pings there as well. <laughs> if that was intentional, that was pretty funny. Ragnar is going to jump on that fort there, try to buy his team a little bit of time. Going to stall out this pushing camp here. And there we go, Zeratul hurting for the health. Alaric gonna go ahead and ta snag that top lane again. 13's almost online for Wholesome Halfwits. And it is all meatballs all the way for Ragnaros. One of those heroes with the wonderful talent variety of pick one talent, one skill, and build it up. I believe that was why Asmodan got reworked. Good flip from the garage, but I knew I could be able to just kind of bug his way out of there. As we've got three on four in the bottom lane. Zerto and Alaric hanging down in the top, trying to get another gank on the mouth, though. It's not happening. Ragnaros a good compliment here to the garage, though, with that speed burst. And another throw, throwing him into the meatball. <laughs> meatball, throwing him into the, the boulder there. Long way going to clean up the middle there. Alaric and Malthiel doing it out in the top again. Red with control of the shrine. 13's online for both teams here any second now. Both teams splitting off to do their camps in the bottom line. So we're going to keep an eye on this. Look at the deadly charge here coming in. This Alaric's going to risk it all. That's an Alaric player if I've ever seen one. Gets the dive in. Misses the Discord Strike. Gets the pull. Discord Strike should be back up to finish him. Not going to be able to do it. And Wholesome Halfway is able to snag that dragon again. They're going to push right down the middle here. Again, both camps pushing in the middle, or in the bottom lane. Going to burn this fort. we got a Nubrak versus Garrosh down underneath. Going to pop the Unstoppable and walk away there. Red team has destroyed a fort. So, <laughs> Alarak not quite getting that pick in the top, but doing very Alarak things, and... They're going to secure two forts here with this Dragonite, so very nice use of it. Going to keep that lane pressure up, get that passive XP soak, and that's just going to keep steam, keep pushing their lead on up. Garage is a cocoon. There's a stun followed by the Toronto stun, and down goes Stukov. 
Garrosh is out of the cocoon. He's going to get punted. Oh, it goes off just a second too late, but he gets off to the side. That's going to be enough maybe to secure this kill. Possibly unstoppable. Rika Frost is going to land right as it wears off. Down goes Garrosh. And Wholesome Halfwings looks sitting pretty here as this Dragonite ends. Up eight kills to two. Alert getting another pull on the Cassia, trying to get that final kill. Toronto just barely missing the stun. And Wholesome Halfwits with great control of the map at the moment. Two lanes pushed very far in. Top lane not quite as under control, but it's not as big a priority. And they're going to invade Arrogant Nephilim's Siege Bruiser camp here. Are heading up to clean up. As the rest of Wholesome Halfwits here are going to take the other bru Bruiser Camp. Siege Camp will be up in a minute for both teams, and the bottom Bruiser Camp will be up here in just a second. So wouldn't be surprised to see them rotate on down there as well. Ragnaros opting for Cauterize Wounds as his level 13. Deviating a little bit from the standard meatball build, but he is getting pretty focused there. So getting that extra sustain will definitely make Zukov's life a little easier. And Holson going to opt to take this top forward here as the rest of Arrogant Nephilim is going to rotate down to this bottom camp. Malthor gets scouted out. They scouted out with the Toronto out. And here they come. They're not going to be there in time to, to stop this, but they have plenty of a setup. And Malthor getting his Void Prison right in the middle. Stone is just a second too early. But that's going to spell the end of Kime. He's not going to be able to stay up. Just too much damage there. They get the camp, but they lose Kimei in the process. With that L coming through, Kimei should have already had the... Finn had the heads up there to just go ahead and back away from where he was in that lane. You knew they had vision on everything there, and that spells trouble most of the time. So 17, 15, the levels here. Level 16's up and going. And they're going to invade another camp of Arrogant Nephilim, doing a very good job keeping full control of this map for them as Janna starts their own siege camp. Only losing out on the Bruiser in the bottom lane this time around. And here we go, Zeratul's got Bottom Shrine under control. Rest of Wholesome Halfwits headed towards the top. Big lane pressure in that bottom lane. They're going to I leave somebody behind here, I would think. Zeratul kind of scouting it out. They're sending Alaric and Jaina up. Zeratul just cleaning up. Arrogant Nephilim having to play cleanup in the bottom lane. They have their 16s online now, so at least on an even talent tier going in here. But this is going to be another Dragon Knight on the side of Wholesome Halfwits. Possibly. Garash at least getting close enough to threaten, so G-Money going to stop the channel. Cocoon on the mouth, though. No follow-up here this time. And they get the Dragon Knight again. There's a big ring. Hits two to three, two people there. Garash getting absolutely obliterated. No pointer. Getting pulled away as well. He's next on the target here. Down he goes as... Wholesome Halfwish is driving it home here. Trabe's super low. Here comes Ragnaros with the Lava Wave. It's going to do a good chunk of damage. They're going to have to force Jelly back. He's not going to be able to be healed as Last Rites takes him out, but Zeratul pays back the favor. So Ragnaros is going to stall this out now. Takes the Dragon Knight bottom. Let's walk away. They're going to go ahead and push it in. Ragnaros is pretty low as it is. Going to get behind him here, just ready to pick him off as he comes out. Jaina getting the slows out. They're just going to focus on the keep. Cassia doing what she can. Dragon Knight is down, and they're going to have to back out. They have no minions to cover him here. Jaina are getting a good hit there. Or, I'm sorry, Toronto getting a great stun there, and Trame's going to have to walk away with all barely any health. My goodness, wholesome halfwits. Calm down. They're out for, for more blood. 12 to 3, the kills here. 19 to 17. They're almost to 20. Catapults in all three lanes, every third wave, or every other wave. Yeah, every other wave. And so this one, not much for Wholesome Halfwits to do. Just kind of soak 20, wait till these lanes push up so they can clear it. There's the Bruiser Camp up online now. It's so the first camp to be active since the dragon has fallen. The Nubrek going to zone it out here. They're going to make this play in here. 19 to 17. They are up in level, but not in talents. And a Nubrek getting absolutely isolated. Void is going to stall out the last strikes. Here comes the ring. They are going to lose a Nubrek. 
but they are going to absolutely blow up Arrogant Nephilim. What a huge combo there. That is everybody but Ragnaros. Absolutely perfect timing on the Void Prism Rain combo there, and despite losing the Anubarak, <laughs> who had to sit there and await his death as Last Rites was frozen by the Void Prism, and that's it. Wholesome Halfway is going to take this keep. And they're looking for the win here at the 16 minute mark. They got a catapult behind them. They're going for it. They've got 20 seconds to do as much damage as they can to this core. And that should do it. That's probably going to spell GG's. As level 20s are online. There's your final stats going into this. So GG's. Wholesome Halfwits taking the 2 0, getting the upset. And that does it. Wholesome Halfwits with the win tonight. 2 0 victory on their side. Here's the final stats for game number two. We will be reaching out to Dr. Jelly to see if he wants to pop in for a quick chat. But there's your final stats. Stukov with 36,000 healing. Toronto with 49,000. 40,000 40, damage on the Alarak. 160 siege damage on the Zeratul. That's all from that Dragon Knight. Ragnaros finishing it out there. 142, 33 damage on the Cassia. 17 to 14, 17 to 4, the final number of kills here. Get your GGs in chat. The ring landed, Hector, don't worry. The ring did land. That last one didn't, at least. I'm going to reach out to Jelly here, see if we can get a quick interview. See how they're feeling after this one. He's not online. Let me see if I can find him. Wholesome half it's all the way down at the bottom of the list here. But very well played, very coordinated ults there. Let's see if we can get Dr. Jelly in here for a quick interview. If not somebody from their side. Very, very on point with the ults there. They had a great amount of control on both on their team in both matches. Just very well done. They did come out of a double header, so they were ready to roll. Yes, we were. Hey, welcome. We got the captain, Dr. Kajeli. <laughs> I had to do it once. I had to do it once. How you feeling? I'm feeling really good. We I think we played really well. We've definitely uh, got our act together from our first set. We we came out really slow. Yeah, you guys looked good in that one. Let's start with game number one. Tomb of the Spider King, what is your pick? Uh, Y'all's game plan there, just heavy front line and let Gul'dan and Sylvanas kind of do their thing with the AoE damage. And poor Decker just can't keep up with that. And it worked out really well. Also joined by Crooked Smile, FYI guys, he snuck in here on us. Uh, so that gives you guys a 2-0 domination, 3 points on the board. And that should bump you guys up right into a tie with Arrogant Nephilim. So, yeah, well nice. we, also, we also beat Logical Decision right before the match started. Ah, so you guys having a good night tonight, very well done. So let's talk about game number 2, it was Dragonshire, that was their pick. And the game plan didn't really deviate for you guys. No, it didn't. Um, we had we had we changed some of the styles up because we got a G money on the on the uh, wow I can't think on the Zero tool, and we had him we had him rotating a lot and getting picks early game and that just helped us uh, kind of push our lead whenever we had it. 
apologize, chat, forgot to turn the music off before we started talking, but I flipped scenes, so the music will be gone. You'll be hearing them very shortly. Uh, definitely Zeratul getting a lot of value there, and chat kind of getting mad about one of the Void Prisms into Ring of Frost not quite landing correctly. <laughs> Mystic, your music on your stream is playing super loud. He just got it. I just got All it. Right. I got it. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't practice Zeratul Jaina a whole lot. Um, we've done it. We did it like once recently in a scrim versus B Meds team, and uh, I mean, even in that game, we only got the combo off one time. Uh, we we didn't seem to need it, unfortunately, uh, as cool as it looks to pull off. But yeah, we're not super practiced on it. That's for sure. Well, it worked out either way. You guys had great macro control both games. Uh, Dragon Shark, you guys just started running away with it. You had every camp on the board at one point. Except for that bottom one, which they snuck in on you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to go back and watch the uh, VOD and see how they got away. I, they must have gotten out before we got down there. Or were they being in that bush on the other side? I really wanted to catch them on the way out after we got the mouth eel kill. <sighs> yeah, uh... You kind of caught them on the way out. And they snuck down there. You guys scouted it out, but you guys weren't going to get there quick enough. But you nah, got the good yeah. pick on the mouth ale. And my transitions yep. are all screwed up, so I'm just going to stick with the beautiful, ugly mug of mine on screen here. But <laughs> you guys looked really good tonight. I saw kind of peruse you the chat a little bit, and you guys were not really feeling it early on. Yeah. it. Uh, we definitely turned on tonight. It was... Uh... It was good. I was getting a little... I was getting bored of losing, to tell the truth. <laughs> it's not fun. Uh, definitely not fun. Well, congratulations, you guys. Taking the 2-0 here tonight on your second of a doubleheader. Looking really solid. You keep that guy, You guys keep that up. You should be looking good the rest of the way. Any shout-outs or anything, guys? Uh, I got a shout-out to the team for showing up. That's some good shit. Uh, good stuff, sorry. I don't know. Uh it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. It's all you, Bob. Uh, nah, man, that's, that's it. Team, Arrogant Nephilim, Mystic. Oh, casting. yeah, thanks for casting. Ah, you're welcome. I got a little loud, y'all. I got a little too hype in game one. The wife came running in and told me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Well it was fun, though. It was good to be back in the casting seat here. So, congratulations, guys. Go celebrate your victories. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah, thanks. GG's. 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 That'll do it, folks. That is the end of our chat with Dr. Jelly and Crooked Smile there from the side of Wholesome Halfwits. They finish it out 2 nothing here at the final. Congratulations to them. I'll be back sometime, either this week or next week. Stick around, check, keep your eyes on the Nexus Gaming Series website for more matches and all the casting channels that are available to us to keep up with it all. I've been your host, Mystic, tonight. Congratulations once again, Wholesome Halfwits, taking the two over Arrogant Nephilim. Have a wonderful night.